Hello! Welcome back to my channel. My name is Claire Hawkins. I'm a singer-songwriter and travel vlogger, and even though I'm originally from New York City, I've been living here in Dublin for nearly two years now. I'm working on my foreign voice. Now that it's been nearly two years, I feel like there's a lot of Irish culture that I've, you know, picked up on. And a lot of those things that I've picked up on are um, pretty different from my upbringing in New York City. I thought it would be kind of fun to talk through some of the things that I've noticed as an American, as a New Yorker, living here in Dublin. So as context, disclaimer, uh, I'm from New York City, so it's a very particular American experience. Uh, and I'm living in Dublin, which is a very particular Irish experience. So a lot of what I say may not apply to the rest of my country or the rest of this country. Um, also, I love it here. I really do. So if any of this comes across as anything less than fully loving Ireland, I apologize because that is not my intent at all. The first category of things that I have to talk about might be the one I have the most to say about, and it is language, slang, words, phrases, you get the idea. One of the first things I noticed when I moved here was that Irish people love the conditional tense. For example, I might say as an American, oh, I don't really go to the shops in town very often. An Irish person might say, oh, I wouldn't be going to the shops in town. Or if someone asks you, oh, do you know so-and-so? I might say, oh, I kind of know him, but I don't, I don't really know him well. Like, we're not super close or anything. An Irish person might say, now, he wouldn't be my best friend. Instead of just like, I don't really know him. Like, I didn't ask if he was your best friend. I just asked if you knew him. I think when I first moved here, the first two things I noticed were the conditional tense and your man and your one. There's a very specific way that Irish people refer to any random person, and it is your man, or if they're female, your one. And depending on your accent, it can sometimes be your wan, like W-A-N. But either way, it means some random guy or some random woman. If you're driving through town and someone cuts you off, you might be like, oh, your man just cut me off. Whereas in the States, I'd say like, ah, oh, that guy. <laughs> this next thing, I don't think it's super confusing for Americans specifically, but I know it's confusing for a lot of Europeans from other parts of the EU. When Irish people are telling time, if they want to say 8.30, what they'll say is half eight. I have friends from other part of Europe who say half eight to mean 7.30. So <laughs> it can cause some confusion if you're an Irish person hanging out with like a German person and you say let's meet at half eight, one of you is gonna get there an hour before the other one. I've also noticed that Irish people really care about what's fair. And what I mean by that is, the word fair works its way into a lot of Irish slang. In fairness, to be fair, fair play, all of these things are said so often, and I know I have picked this one up because I think I say to be fair after every sentence I say. The weather's been really bad recently, although it wasn't too bad on Tuesday, to be fair. Like, it's just if you're saying anything that's the opposite. Actually, no, it's not even specific. It can just be put in any sentence at any time. <laughs> Now, I don't think this will be a surprise to anyone that there's quite a few differences of vocab in Irish English versus American English. For example, that place that you're going to, that's one street over, not one block. You know that time right before winter when the leaves start to change? Yeah, that's autumn, that's not fall. When you put out your bins, not your trash cans, you have your recycling and your rubbish, not your trash. If you're boiling some water, cooking pasta, yeah, you do that on the hob, not the stove. I had an interesting, confusing moment once with my cousin who's from Dublin, because if I say, oh, I'm not mad at it, or I'm not mad about it, that is like a kind of sarcastic, playful way of saying, oh, I like it, or at the very least, I'm not bothered by it. Irish people, when they say they're not mad about something, they do not like it. So that was very confusing in some, I think we were talking about a Netflix show. I don't know. But we both like it, and she thought that I was saying I didn't like it. The last thing that I'll include in this category is spelling differences. So when I got a job here in Dublin, I was working at a theater, not a theater. And I live in Dublin city center, not Dublin city center. It's very confusing. I spell everything wrong all the time. The next category that I absolutely have to cover are the people. Irish people are 
so nice. Like just genuinely so lovely. And I've noticed it in interesting contexts. For example, when we were shooting the music video for my song Small Doses, out now, link somewhere, please go watch it, a very enthusiastic drunk man uh, came over and jokingly tried to steal the camera. Um, and obviously that was not funny because he grabbed it in the middle of a shot. As a New Yorker, my immediate reaction to someone who, you know, is coming over in your space joking about stealing your stuff, like, yeah, that does not fly with New Yorkers, we get mad. However, all the Irish people who were on set definitely knew how to handle it better, so before I could get angry, they all just sort of laughed off and, you know, grabbed the camera and said, ah ha ha ha, that's funny, have a good night, and the guy went away. So clearly there's, that is just the way that these things are handled. When a drunk person comes and messes with you on the street, you just laugh it off and tell them to have a nice night. That was weird as a New Yorker. I feel like this does kind of go hand in hand with Irish people not being super direct. Like, if they like you, they will make fun of you to your face. If they don't like you, they will make fun of you behind your back. So that's just something to keep an eye out for. Also, this might just be my experience, but Irish people are so funny. Like, they're all comedians. All of them. It's really, it's really handy because I like to laugh. For the next category, we're gonna loosely call it geography. Basically, the first thing that you need to know when you come to Ireland uh, as a non-Irish person is um, they don't love the UK. Now, they don't dislike individual people from the UK, but they don't love the entity. <laughs> now, this is tied back to a lot of really complicated Irish history, but basically um, the surefire way to offend an Irish person is to think that Ireland is part of Britain. It's not. Northern Ireland is, but the Republic of Ireland is not. Um, so yeah, don't make that mistake when you're here. In addition to a bit of a more serious rooted in history rivalry uh, with Britain, there's also kind of a more playful rivalry between Dublin and pretty much the entire rest of the Republic of Ireland. I find it really funny because obviously it comes across in things like sports where you have your different teams for different areas, makes sense, um, but then there's also like cultural things beyond sports like food and like tea, like which brand of tea that you like it has to do with where you live, I think. I've definitely noticed even just in my comments on my videos that people from outside of Dublin sort of think that they're real Ireland and Dublin is not real Ireland, but Dublin is what's often represented in the media as real Ireland, so they, they, you can see why there might be some tension there. Now speaking specifically of Dublin, the word town is used to describe Dublin, which I find very funny because Dublin is the capital city and it's very much a city. Um, to me, a town is is the opposite kind of of a city, or I guess the countryside would be the opposite of a city. But to me, a town and a city are two very different things. So I find it very interesting here that in Dublin, people will say like, oh, are you headed into town? Are you going to town? And it means the city center. People also do this interesting thing where when you're already in town, they say they're going into town and they mean like the center of town, like Grafton Street. But I find it really weird because like I live in town, but like people will ask me, like friends will be like, oh, do you want to meet in town? And I'm like, do you mean at my house? If you're not new to my channel and you know, I'm a musician, I basically moved to Ireland because of the music scene here. This last category it has to be my favorite and it is music. Not only does Ireland have fantastic music, it is really everywhere, and I love that so much. So it's in the pubs, it's obviously at actual music venues, and it's just on the streets everywhere, and it's really good. I mean, I have been in quite a few cities, quite a few countries with buskers, with street performers, but the quality of street performers in this country compared to other countries I've been to, it's just a different caliber. I don't know if it's because it's such a part of the culture here, you know, tourists come to Ireland to hear music, I moved to Ireland to hear music. I know that the process to get a permit to perform on the street, in Dublin anyway, can be a bit tricky, so maybe it's just that's how they weed out 
the less talented people, or maybe everyone in this country is talented, I don't know. I just think that there's a deep level of appreciation for music that's just ingrained in Irish culture, and I don't think that's true of every single country in the world. That's my list! Well, it's part of my list. There's probably a lot more I could say on this topic, so I don't know. If you want a part two, let me know. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching, I hope you enjoyed, and if you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, please do, and uh, stick around for some more Irish videos coming very soon.